Revelation chapter 17 tonight. I, I've got to admit something to you. Chapter 17 and, and this chapter number 18 are, are, have, are difficult. They're, they're more difficult for, for me than any other uh, chapters thus far in the book of Revelation. And, but, it's, but it shouldn't be. And, uh, you know, when we compare Scripture with Scripture, but I'm sure and most people I talk to that, that they get to these two chapters and it's, it's, uh, it's what, what's in here is very true. But a lot of the symbolism and, and things are uh, maybe uh, be hard to understand. So I'm going to go back over what we went over Sunday night and try to be a little more clear about this uh, uh, harlot, this, uh, what, this other woman in the book of Revelation that we've uh, been studying about. In chapter number 17, I'm going to read this scripture again to you. And verse number 1. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, talked with me, saying, come, come, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names and of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns, and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden... Uh, cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication and upon her forehead was a name written mystery Babylon the great the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus and when I saw her I wondered with great admiration and the angel said unto me wherefore didst thou marvel I will tell thee the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carrieth uh, her which hath the seven heads and ten horns. Now, in, the, in this, this second woman is called the mother of harlots. And the first one is the one that was carried away into the wilderness. And that, uh, that produced the man child. That's the nation of Israel comes out of, or Jesus comes out of the nation of Israel. That's the man child. And then here, out of, out of religion and out of well, what has been going on since the Tower of Babel. Now, we read to you uh, uh, Sunday night, and we're not going to go back to Genesis again and read that, but in, you know, in Genesis it talks about uh, the Tower of Babel. Now, this, this mother of harlots and har har harlotry stands for false worship and idolatry. Now, that'll help you to know that. What does that mean? It means false uh, worship and idolatry. Now, that can mean anything. And we know, we know that there are religions today that are false religions. Uh, Jehovah's Witness, they're a false religion. They're, they are a deceptive, a deceptive group of people. And they're, even though they're very fervent in their beliefs, they are a false worship. Mormonism is a false worship. Roman Catholicism is a false worship. And, and that seems to be like the golden calf uh, that people ever want to talk about is how that, that is not a... Uh, not a, a religion that should be upheld and uplifted. But I have, no, I have, I have some common interest with uh, some of the folks. You know, I, I'm not against Catholic people as a, as a whole, but their religious system is, is one of har, har, harlotry. It's a hard word for me to say, but it, it's, it is a, a religion of that because it, it always puts man over God. And, and, you know, like I said, when they put this uh, last pope in, up into office, well, man, you just, you, people all over, ever seem like ever head turned uh, when they elected a new pope. And I'm thinking he's just a man. And he is, he is not God. He is not, uh, you know, he, he's not the uh, uh, kin to the Lord Jesus Christ. Matter of fact, he's lost and needs to be saved by God's grace. Or he never would take the, uh, you know, take the, the, that office having thinking that he is equal with Christ because there's nobody like Jesus, amen? Nobody like unto him. So the false religion and false worship, that is what harlotry is. Uh, when people set up their own religions, uh, when people give their hearts and, and their, their minds and their souls to idol worship, then that, friend, that becomes harlotry. Uh, this is called whoredoms, adultery, and fornication. Now, Old Testament scripture to 
confirm this is in, is in Jeremiah chapter number 3, uh, verse number 6. The Lord said also unto me, In the days of Josiah the king, hast thou seen that uh, which backslidden Israel hath done? She has gone up upon every high mountain and under every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. The worship to other gods, turn from God, and that was the uh, had has been the history of is, Israel over uh, this over these many years that she's been in, in existence. They have always had a cycle that they would worship the Lord, and they would turn to idolatry, turn to harlotry. God would bring some judgment in their life, and they would turn back to the Lord. And in verse also verse eighty nine of this same chapter in Jeremiah. And I saw when for all the causes where, whereby backslidden Israel committed adultery, I had put her away and given her a bill of divorce, yet her treacherous sister Judah feared not, but went and played the harlot also. And it came to pass through the lightness of her whoredom that she defiled the land and committed adultery with stones and with stocks. And that's idol worship. And that's what harlotry is in the scripture it is false worship of a God other than the true and the living God. A friend, you know, you and I have to be careful in these days that we live in that we not let anything come between us and our worship of God. And it, it doesn't have to be a rock sitting out in the yard, you know. I, I, where was I? I was somewhere. And I went into their house, and they had a little idol set up. Now, I cannot remember where it's, but they had a little idol set up. And, uh, and they would pr pray to whatever those figurines were on that, you know, and, and uh, light candles and put them in there. And I'm thinking, this is not of God. This is not something that, you know, that uh, Christian people should partake in. Uh, we worship the true God of heaven. Now, can I go, do I have to be at church to worship God? No, this is a building. This is a place of fellowship. This is a house of worship where God's people come together to worship together. But we ought to worship God every day. And there should be, you know, there should be in our hearts, and it is in our hearts to worship, but it should be in our hearts that we worship the true and living God. Now, I've seen people that worship money, and uh, that would come between them and God. They, you know, if, if I don't make a lot of money, then I'm, you know, I'm not going to be any good to my family. And, and I've watched people put money in between them and the Lord. Good people, saved people. I've watched them put uh, sports between them and God. I've watched them put hunting and fishing between them and the Lord. And you all know how. I, you know, I have nothing against any of that. But the God of heaven is the one that we worship, and he should have the preeminence in my life and in your life. He should be the one. Now, the last days that we're living in, we are seeing a, a gradual, well, not a gradual. Now, it's been more, produ more progressive here in the last few years of people that, uh, that don't want, any, want it, don't want anything to do with the God of heaven. Uh, we have people that that you know seemingly they worship politics, and they want to have a high place in society or a high place in government. And and we see people like that all the time that uh, they live their lives for something other than God. And Christian people, if you're not careful, we'll get caught up in those things. And we'll, we'll uh, you know, everything, the devil will lull us, think everything's going all right. But then we'll see, look, I put this before the Lord. It happens, friend. It happens to me. And if I'm not careful, those things will come between us and the Lord. And that causes us to commit spiritual har harlotry when we put those things before God. But this is something that's been going on in religions and, and since the time of, of Nimrod uh, in the, tower, the building of the Tower of Babel. Now, when they built that Tower of Babel, they, I forget how many stories that thing was. It's like 20 stories high. And, uh, you know, building that to heaven, uh, up to God's level is what they, what they were trying to do. And Nimrod put a statue of his wife on the top of that Tower of Babel. Why? So that people would worship that statue. Now, friend, that, that has been back in the book of Genesis. But that has been alive, even though that... Babylon was destroyed, that spirit has been alive until today. So you got to understand, when, as time has gone by, uh, then that, but that spirit of Babylon has always uh, been in existence. If, if anyone or any person puts, other than worshiping the Lord God in front of, you know, if they put anything in front of worshiping the Lord God, uh, that is spiritual adultery. That is idol worship. In 
Mark chapter 12, verse number 29. Let me find that right quickly. Mark chapter 12 and verse 29. The Bible tells us this. And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is here, O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. Amen. He's one. There's just one God. There's no other God besides him. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. He's the only God. And uh, nobody else. Now, what else does he say? And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Now, friend, the, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, that is the first commandment. And, friend, that, that, or, or that is the greatest commandment. And, and concerning all of this, when someone does anything but that, they've committed spiritual adultery. And they have fallen after that harlot of, of, uh, of uh, uns you know, being something, trying to put something before the Lord. And it never works. It never has worked and it never will. So the mother of harlots is the, is the mother of ever false religion uh, since, the, since the, the founding of Babylon in the book of Genesis. Now, uh, as Nimrod, he's the one that started all this. Go back and read Genesis where it talks about the Tower of Babel. He was the one that started all of this. He, you know what his name means? It means religious panther. That's what his name is, a religious panther. And, and he being that, he wanted people to worship him and his idols. And he cared nothing about God. And so God stopped it then, friend. And this society that's being raised up today, this uh, religious organizations that are being raised up today that, are, that have their eyes set on other than God, guess what? The Lord's going to stop that too. And he's going he's to stop that in time. Now, we read here about the wine of her uh, fornication. We read that. Now, the wine of her fornication is the carnal worship of false gods that people begin to worship. It, you, I've had missionaries tell me that they went into places you know, and, and in those villages where, you know, where nobody had been, uh, somewhere in maybe the Amazon or somewhere in Brazil or somewhere in Africa, and though they, would say, they would have something there, though, that they were worshiping. They would have some idol or they would have some person or they would have a sun god or, you know, or they would have the moon god or they would have a, a tree that they worship because it's in the heart of man to worship. Just like it's in your heart and in my heart to worship. But it's in our heart to worship the true and living God. But now think about those folks that don't know what I'm talking about tonight. Think about those people that don't know God. They're going to worship something. And, and even though they may not call it worship, it's, it's whatever they do in life that, you know, like, like the fellow I, I was telling you about it, I talked to. He knows better. He, he knows what's right. And, and seemingly to me, you know, he, he thinks he has no hope. The devil has slipped him, you know, slipped him something that, that has caused him to be so blind. He thinks there's no hope for him. But, oh, my friend, there's hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the one that we need to point people to when we talk to them about religion. We need to just point them to Jesus. And, I, you listen, there's a lot of good people. I'm not anti-religion whatsoever. And I'm not, you know, I'm anti the devil. I'll just tell you, and I'm anti the devil's works. But I'm not anti-people, or neither am I anti-religion, so to speak, but I'm anti the devil. And if religion falls under that, then I'm anti that religion. So as, as we see the spirit of Babel, which it, what it symbolizes is a political religious system, and it'll be here, that, that, relig that political re religious system will be here till the Lord comes. Because it, it's always been... You know, you'll find many times in, in politics, many times in governments, uh, they set up a state religion. Or they want, you know, they want people to worship, but they want them to worship only one way. And so where is this all uh, centered around? Verse number 8, we see, we talk, we'll find that in just a minute. In verse number, uh, verse number 8, The beast that thou sawest wa was and is not and shall ascend out of, of the bottomless pit and go into perdition, 
And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life where the foundation of the world, when they beheld the beast that was and is not and yet is. Now what does all this mean? The beast that was and the, and the beast that uh, is not and yet is. Well, this beast that was was that old Babylonian empire. And that old Babylonian empire uh, that was falling, and I wrote those dates down here somewhere if I can find them. Uh, that old, ba it, it stood, that old Babylon empire, it stood from 753, uh, 753 B.C. until 476 A.D. Now, that was the Roman Empire, okay? Since that time, Rome has not been in power. You think about it. You go back in history. Rome has not been in power. Now, in John's day, the empirical system of government was what was in place. That was, that was part of the, of the Roman Empire. That, that, that was what was in place that day. So in John's time, what was was that political system uh, that John didn't see. But in John's time, that was what is. John's saying this is what is now. That's what is. And then there is one to come, a political system, a religious political system that is to come. What is that? That is the rising, uh, again, of the ten federation kingdom of the Babylonian Empire that's going to be set up right after the rapture. Now, that's ten king, That's ten places here on this earth. That's ten kingdoms on this earth uh, under ten different leaders. Uh, a federation of peoples, and they'll, they'll follow, you know, they'll follow the, the, the beast, and they'll do whatever he says, but then the tables are going to turn on them. Now, the seven heads, <clears throat> uh, verse number nine, and here is the mind which hath wisdom, that has seven heads or seven mountains on which the woman sitteth. So the heaven, seven heads are, there's seven hills around, uh, around Rome. And that's, that is what is considered the seven heads of the city of Rome. So the seven hill cities. Now, uh, this is the center and has been for how long? Many, many hundreds of years. This has been the center of, of the woman's or of the universal authority and influence. Now, who has been in Rome for 1,500 years? It has been the center of one religion for 1,500 years. The Vatican. The Pope. The head of the Roman Catholic Church. All of that has been in Rome for 1,500, uh, 1500 plus years. So, so uh, and it, is, it has flourished there. And it has branched out into every, uh, every continent, every country. Uh, all a lot, a lot of places around the world you'll go, you'll, you'll find them there. Now, is that a scary thought? To me, it is. Will I get lambasted for saying some of the things I'm saying about the Catholic Church? I probably will. But friend, the, I, I, there, there, it is at the point where I believe that they are, uh, you know, the, one of the centers of false religion in our society, in our world, is the Roman Catholic Church. Now, people don't know no better. You, you talk to people, and they are, they are, that are you know, caught up in that, that are members of that uh, church, uh, you find out what they believe. And they believe as long as they get everything all right once a week, then they're fine. They're, you know, and I, there's a lot I can go into, but I'm not going to. It is, it, it is, it is something that people look at, that people see, and, they, and it's, it's simple for them, you know. And all they have to do is keep their sins confessed and you know, give a lot of money because that's the 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 richest, uh, you know, the richest place on earth is is there. And 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 as long as they give their money, as long as they give their time, and they show up, you know, occasionally and they attend the mass. Then for them, everything's fine. Everything's well. But oh, my friend, how deceptive that is. Jesus lives in my heart, and Jesus lives. He is the one that saved me by his grace. And I'm not saved by, uh, you know, by sprinkling on of, of holy water. I was in a service one time that was, well, it wasn't Catholic, but it was, you know, one of the offsprings of that. And I was in there and fell to just a, just, had some beautiful music. That's what I went for because somebody invited me. And I thought, well, you know, I, I'll go. <coughs> so I went and listened to the beautiful 
uh, beautiful music. They was having some kind of cantata, and that was all right. But the other things they were doing, I'm thinking, my goodness, this is as far from God as you can get. And yet people just all over that thinking, how wonderful, what a wonderful thing it is. I'll tell you what's good. Jesus Christ and him crucified. When God's people that are members of the body of Christ, born-again believers, saved by God's grace, we worship the one God and the true God. And you'll not be, you, you as a believer won't be deceived. But, there, but when the day comes and when the, uh, the seven kings that are, you know, that, that we see here are different forms of government, there, there will be that one world religion. Now, that, will that be headed up by the Roman Catholic Church? Now, I can't answer that. I don't know. Is that going to be the, uh, you know, the, the center of it? I don't know, but I know that is one thing. I know that's one thing that, is, that has lasted you know, for uh, 1,500 years. That's one, that's one uh, thing that has happened, and it is in Rome, and that is where the uh, Ten Federation Kingdom <coughs> is going to be made up of European nations. So... The, the, next th the next thing, a as we go along, we'll re let me read on down through here just a little bit. So he explains what these seven kings are, verse number 10, and there are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, <clears throat> and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue for a short space, and the beast that was and is not, even he that is the eighth and is the seven and goeth into, unto perdition and the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no kingdoms as yet but received power as kings one hour with the beast these have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast these shall make a war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them for he is lord of lords and king of kings and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful those that are with him are you and I and the one, the, the, that religious system, that, then that, that political system is going to make war with the Lamb of God. And when they make war with the Lamb of God, that, that's, when, that's when all the destruction is going to come about. And that's when God is going to say, that's enough. And that's, that's when he's going to say, I'll take care of all this mess, and God will clean it all up then. And he said to me, the waters <coughs> which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and give their kingdoms unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. Now, we'll get into this a little bit deeper the next time but now you we must understand that this the next thing that that will happen is this political system will be set up and that there will be a one world currency there will be a one world religion and everybody's going to be made to worship that one god and they're going to be made to worship that one man and they're going you know and if they don't then it'll be the end for it and I'm glad, even though I don't understand all of this, I try my best to understand it, but a lot of it I do not understand, but I'm learning all the time. There's one thing I know, that when this is going on, you and I are going to be, or will be with the Lord. And when we get down here where he comes back with 10,000 of his saints, pick out your horse, friend, you're going to be riding one. Amen. I don't like riding horses, preacher. Well, amen, we'll come back with 10,000 of his saints. And I know that has special meaning uh, for Sister Thelma back there. Uh, but, but, you know, that's what the Bible says. But we'll continue on here the next time, and we'll uh, get through these two chapters. And, and if, if I do nothing else, I'll cause you to study. Amen. I'll cause you to study. But study your history and, and study these things and uh, continue on in the Word of God, and we'll, we'll try our best to rightly divide the Word of truth. Father, we thank you, Lord, tonight for your goodness. Lord, for all your blessings. Lord, I pray, God, you'd help us, Lord, that we would understand the scriptures and lord may you enlighten us to these things god that as, as we study these now we as we have studied them in the past and god seems like sometimes we do have difficulty but god i'm glad that you are the spirit of light and god even though we may not understand all of this lord in these uh, few chapters god we know that whatever you do is going to be done right 
And Lord, what what man does here on this earth after the rapture is going to be a hard, well, it's going to be a horrible thing. And what religion's going to do is just going to be religion. But God, I'm glad you're the same God yesterday, today, and forever. And God, you know exactly how it's going to happen. And I pray, God, until Lord, this all begins to take place. God, help us to be faithful till you come for the bride. In Jesus' name, Amen. God bless you, Amen. Thank you for coming. You pray for us as we continue our study on. And uh, as we understand these things or try to rightly divide and understand these things, uh, remember uh, the most important thing of all of this is that, that you and I are saved by God's grace. We will not be caught up in this religious system because we're known of the, uh, you know, we're known as part of the bride of Christ. And that when all this is taking place, you and I will be with the Lord. But there's certainly multitudes of people that we're around that I'm certain will be here. When all of these things take place, I'm glad it's not going to be me. Amen. All right, anyone else got anything tonight before we dismiss now? All right, let's stand and we'll be dismissed. Most of you don't look too confused, so maybe we'll do all right. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for coming tonight. Amen. Let's pray tonight. All right, Brother John, dismiss us. Will you please, sir?